Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to use the foreground select tool in GIMP. So we'll load up GIMP software and we're going to be using this tool here called the foreground select tool. So we'll open up Unsplash website in our web browser and we'll find a suitable image like something like this would work quite well this image here and this image, all of these four, these ones at the top and this one here. Something like this would be very difficult to use the foreground select where it wouldn't work so well. Um, you want an image which has got quite a clean background, it doesn't have to be like a flat colour, but something that's quite contrasting from the foreground image. So you can see the white is kind of like a grey and then the picture in the front is contrast, it's got quite a lot of contrast between the two and the colours are not clashing. So let's give this image a try. We'll click download free and then we'll open up this folder on my desktop. Let's just uh, open up this folder and we'll drag and drop the picture in here. We'll minimize this and drag and drop it into GIMP. And we want to use the foreground select tool. So we select this tool here. We'll use the control key and the mouse wheel to zoom in. And then we can use the middle mouse button to move the canvas. We're going to start around here and we'll just click with our left mouse button and just do a rough selection. It's going to go around this image, around the hair. And just do a rough selection. It doesn't have to be super accurate, but You want to make sure you're outside of the image. When you get to somewhere like here and you want to move the canvas, just hold down the middle mouse button and just drag across and you can get to the other side. And really what we want to do here is when you get to the bottom here we want to join them and when you move your mouse over the first point you can see it goes orange that's that's the join so we want to join it here by left clicking and that will be the selection so we can use the control key and zoom out of it so we can see the whole selection and then just hit the enter key now you can see what's been selected so everything blue is considered the background and everything inside that's highlighted is considered the foreground but when you hit that enter key, these tools over here are going to change. And you've got this foreground select and the mode, we should select this first option, which is uh, replace current selection. And then the draw mode, we want to select foreground. And then the stroke width, width we want to increase it. Um, this preview color, you can change it to a different color if, it, if it's easier for you to see the color between the background and the foreground, but we're going to leave it blue. So the dark blue, we're going to ignore and the lighter color is really where the selection is. And with this um, stroke width, what the software has done is giving you this paintbrush tool. And it's asking you like, you know, give me a rough estimate as to where or what you want to keep. So we'll click here once and we want, you can see like now it's highlighted the face. So this part of the face we want to keep, right? And we're going to keep all of this body. So I'm clicking once with the mouse as I'm going down. And I would advise that you use like a, a single click like this to do the bulk of the work. And what happens is sometimes you'll click somewhere. Let me just do most of it. Right, so that's quite a lot of it done. And sometimes you might click like somewhere here and you end up going on the outside. Can you see it's highlighted here? You don't want that. You want to avoid going on the outside of the image. So if you make a mistake like that, just go to edit, undo draw foreground, undo draw foreground or control Z and that will undo that last step. And you want to get fairly close to the edge as possible and use this big paintbrush to do the bulk of the, the work. But you don't want to go into the background, yeah? And when it comes to hair, you've got to be a bit more careful. Um, Let's just do the bulk of this up here. So you see the hair down the left hand side here. 
you want to make this a bit smaller this brush and you don't want to click where you can see the background showing through so you want to avoid clicking where you can see like the white or the, the background showing through so all of this is good up here but avoid clicking over like these sort of areas but where it's just like hair on its own you're good to go so we'll move down to here we can paint all of this you don't have to get too close to the edge it's better to probably stay a little bit away from the edge than go into the background if you go into the background then it's really this tool's not going to work very well so avoid going into the background so it takes a bit of patience and effort but if you do this rough selection well enough you'll get a better result so you can get close but you know you, you can see I'm not going super close if we wanted to do a layer mask we'll have to go right up to the edge and cutting really really clean and here you can see like, it's pretty rough around the edge here um, but that's fine we have to avoid going into the background that's the main thing should be fine okay we'll move to this side and just get a bit closer to this side When you've got big areas like this to do then just make the brush bigger you see i've gone over the edge here don't want to do that so undo that and these single clicks just make life easier if you make a mistake you can undo it without having to undo a lot of work that you've done already so I'll try and do that we'll make this a bit smaller Okay, we're pretty much done. That should work pretty well. So you can see the, the inside selection is quite rough. It's not that right to the edge like you do in a, in a um, layer mask. So once you've done that, hit the enter key. And all that background is going to get removed. Then we can just go ahead and do and uh, we can do click select here. So click, click this select button here. And that will make a selection then we can press ctrl z to copy that selection create a new layer here and make it a transparent one click ok then we can do ctrl v or edit paste and we'll paste that selection and then we need to anchor this floating layer down so we need to click this green anchor here 
then we can remove the background this, this bottom image we can just hide it and then we'll have the selection here then the next thing we can do is go to file save as and we'll save this as image dash zero one and click save and then we can go back to unsplash maybe we'll look for something we need to look for somewhere some background so we look for new york maybe let's find something new york based um let's have a quick look through here Maybe we use this image, right? It's got like a nice background to it. So we'll click on it and download this. I'll put a link to this in the YouTube description as well. You can use this same background or pick any background you like. You want something of like a similar shape. So this, the, the original image was portrait. So we want like a portrait image, tall image. So we'll drag that into the folder here. So we've got that here. And then we'll drag that image, that background image into the layers here. And we'll click keep and now we can see on a different background so it wasn't the cleanest job could have spent a bit more time doing that but you can see it's not a bad effort for the time that we spent it's acceptable um, and then we can click on the top layer here and we can go to the resize tool scale tool click it hold down the shift key and we can rescale something like this and then we can go to the flip tool in this example and click on the picture we can flip it over and then we can use the move tool and maybe move the image to over the door maybe slightly off canvas so we can still see this picture in the background something like this there you go so let's just go to file save file export We'll select a JPEG, we'll export it, click the export tool, we can close this now, and there we have it. So it's not too bad really, these highlights around the hair was a bit rough, and around this arm we could have fixed this up a little bit, but as a good example of the foreground select tool, that's really how we, how we would use it. Um, so I hope you find that tutorial useful. That's kind of another way to remove a background from an image, right? It wasn't the cleanest job, but we would have spent a bit more time with our selection. You can see a few artifacts on the arm here. We could have cleaned that up as well. So kind of an experiment with the foreground select tool. Now you know how to use it. And you can cut around an image and place it on a different background. So it's just a rough, rough example of how to use this tool. Um, Maybe later I'll show I'll do some more examples of maybe a clearer cut image and spend some more time on it, but uh, didn't want this tutorial to be too long. So I hope you find that tutorial useful. Go and experiment with the foreground select tool, and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.